Here on the first Sunday after Easter, we are offering a morning prayer service. And many of you have written me emails or spoken to me personally and asked, why do we insist on offering morning prayer when I'm a priest and my family lives here on the campus and we can certainly offer Holy Communion, recorded and distributed to all of you to watch? Well, part of the reason is because of a man named Nicholas Farrar. Now, Nicholas Farrar was in the 17th century a deacon. In fact, he was ordained a deacon by Archbishop Laud. And Nicholas Farrar belonged to a community or started a community called the Little Giddings. And they practiced morning and evening prayer as a small community. And they recognized that inside the daily office was something just as special as our Holy Communion service. In fact, Farrar in his company, or Farrar in his community, are really a high point in the personal devotion of what we often malign as the high church movement. Farrar was good friends with the great poet George Herbert, and in fact was a contemporary acquaintance of those great Anglican divines that understood the power and the majesty of the language of the prayer book. Nicholas Farrar, when he was ordained a deacon, it was made very clear to him by Archbishop Laud that he would not proceed to the priesthood and that he would be inside this office of the deacon for the remainder of his service to the church. Now, in the Church of England, this is significant because being not a priest means that Nicholas could not celebrate the Holy Communion even if he had wanted to. But I don't think that's why morning and evening prayer became so significant to him. In fact, if you look at the Anglican Communion in the United States and even in the Church of England before the rise of the ritualist movement, morning and evening prayer were seen as great sacramental achievements. The ability to say the office as men, women, and children was not seen as inferior to the Holy Communion, but rather as a equal and opposite part, complementing the power of Christ descending upon the altar in His real presence. In fact, much is unknown amongst modern Anglicans about the prevalence of morning prayer as the principal service throughout the American colonies, or even throughout the country parishes of the Church of England. What that means is that for most Anglicans throughout the 17th, 18th, and even into the 19th century, morning prayer was their worship service. And yet the sad state of affairs today is that many Anglicans, because we have transitioned into a weekly communion sense, are not familiar or able to practice or able to navigate the Book of Common Prayer to say morning and evening. What's also important is that Nicholas Farrar understood the power of common prayer. You see, there's certainly a vertical sense in which Holy Communion allows the epicletical prayers, allows our Lord and His real presence to descend upon us and to be near and with us. And we certainly need that life-sustaining grace, that means of grace offered at the altar through Holy Communion. But the Book of Common Prayer is not merely a book of ritual. It's a book that built a community. And so Farrar, with his household, his mother or servants, and those living on the estate there at Little Gidding, understood that speaking common prayers together did something to knit this community together by saying the same prayers every day, reading the same sense of scriptures, doing it morning and evening, their life became intertwined. You see, the power of the prayer book is not just that it contains the ancient prayers of the apostolic fathers, that maintains this unbroken tradition of celebrating the Lord's Supper until His coming again. That's certainly the high point and why we celebrate Holy Communion on every feast. But the prayer book is also a great tool for building and uniting families and communities as one in a matter of concord. And so Farrar allowed the prayer book to be the basis by which his community was formed. And I hope the same is true for us, especially in a time when we are separated by these government shutdowns. 
When we physically can't be present, the spiritual unity offered by the prayer book is something that we as Anglicans need to hold on to. And perhaps even recover as a practice of corporate discipline as we return back into our churches. Daily prayer is very important. Now the other part that's often missing from our conversation is that the cathedral service, or the, the great worship service, ideally, would have been on Sunday, we would come together for morning prayer. And then we would come together for the litany. Then we would come together for Holy Communion. And then we would come together for evening prayer. It wasn't, should we do Holy Communion every Sunday or not, but rather, both and. Instead of this one, this one, and this one, it's yes. And so, as we are able, we should remember the importance of morning prayer. With that.